Andy, uh, thank you uh, for joining me today on Press Day. Absolutely. Thanks so much for uh, meeting me. The Man Cave Chronicles. I like That's that, right. my friend. By the way, I love that uh, blanket on the couch. Thank you. you know yes, I'm a big fan. I have another. I have to scoot my chair over. But, oh, I got to really scoot my chair. There we go. There nice. we go. I got the believe sign. I got the whole nine. I'm a, yeah. I'm a lasso fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I'm excited for uh, for uh, to get you on here to talk about uh, your latest project, the Reeducation of Molly Singer, which uh, September 29th in the theaters and VOD and digital. I watched it last night. I liked it, my friend. Uh, I I had that. I don't know if you were, you felt the same way while you were filming this, but it felt me like the remember those '90s movies, like the yes. comedy and everything. That's what yes. I got out of this watching this. I mean, th those are the movies that I fell in love with and wanted to become a filmmaker, and those are the movies that I try to you know, emulate. Cause I, I don't know. I, I'm a firm believer that the, the eighties and nineties were just some of the best time for pop, you know, pop culture, yeah. you know, comedies, movies and stuff like that. So that's what we are going for. Yeah. I got to put you on the spot. You said big night. Uh, we talked about the nineties favorite comedy of the nineties since we're going to talk about a comedy. Uh, well, I'm a huge Ron Shelton fan. So like late eighties, uh, Bull Durham nineties, Tin Cup. Uh, those are yeah. two, those are two of my absolute favorite movies. Uh, my favorite movie of all time is Roxanne. Uh, I just think that's a perfect film. I watch it all the time. It's funny. I watched it. My nephew who's, you know, total millennial had never heard of the <laughs> movie, never heard of the play, never knew anything of Cyrano. He, uh, he was out visiting and I kind of showed him some of my favorite movies and it was funny to see somebody that like just was not privy to these type of movies mm. was like, this is hilarious. And I'm like, I know they don't make movies like this anymore. They don't. No. We get it. We get into big conversations with friends of mine. Like they don't make movies like how they used to. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's just, you, you, you know, like, can you imagine pitching tin cup now where it's just like, no. yeah, he's an amateur golfer and he tried, you know, it's just like, it just would not, it would just not work in, in the, in the current system. So I feel, I feel blessed that we, <laughs> we got to experience them and, and stuff like that. How about you? What's your what's your go to? I mean, when you mentioned Roxanne, I thought of right away my Blue Heaven. I love that Steve oh, Martin movie. Yes. Oh my God, it's so fun, dude. I love that movie. That yeah. the part where he's in the he's in the the uh, the grocery store and he's like, yeah. "Do you have a Google?" <laughs> it's a vegetable. Yeah. So, uh, what do you what are you hoping for when the viewers tune in to watch this movie? What are you hoping to get out of this project? You know, my goal is that you kind of get, you take two things home, right? Is that you laugh your butt off. That's always like the, the, the first thing is that you just, you enjoy the characters and you want to be somebody that would hang out with them. But the second thing, and you know, the sort of the theme of the movie is, you know, this movie is about, it's never too late to discover who you are. And that's really the goal of every character in this film in one way, shape or form is that Molly's trying to figure out who she is because she's gone down this path of, what she's supposed to do with her life this sort of this is a career track that makes sense you know and nico is rebelling against you know overbearing parents and stuff like that and he's gone the other direction where he's like i'm gonna do me to like the detriment of himself and so it's really about just being honest with himself you know mm -hmm. and 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 brenda and elliot are overcoming trauma and, and in their own way, Elliot's trying to kind of get out of the shadow of the expectations of the ghost of his dad. Yeah. And Brenda's trying to like, she has to be able to let go of somebody so close to her after le losing somebody close to her, you know? And so it's just, it's all about like self-discovery. And if people can find themselves in that, that's about all I can ask for. Hmm. How did you uh, get approached for this project? How did you uh, get your name on it? So uh, Todd Friedman, the writer producer, I was editing a film for him called Collection uh, a few years earlier, and we just really hit it off in post. You know, we worked pretty closely together uh, on that movie, and and he works with my producing partner Warner Davis all the time. So he asked me what you know I wanted to do next, thinking it was like you know I, I had done a lot of horror movies and stuff like that. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, the noisemaker. I'm taking him out. Get out of here. He's real cute until he's not. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, so he kind of, I, I think, expected me to be like, oh, I want to do a horror movie. And I was like, no, I want to do a comedy. That's that's where my heart is. And he's like, oh, I have a comedy I wrote years ago. And so he pitched me this project, but it was it was called The Reeducation of David Singer. It was this sort of male-driven, very American pie. You talk about 90s comedies. Yeah. You know, much more American pie. So I said, I love the concept. I said, let's make this a little bit more fresh now. Humor, you know, humor a little bit more modern and stuff like that, but still with that sort of throwback. And then 
he uh, he and uh, Kevin took it, and there, that was kind of it. We re, oh. we redid it and got it going. Now you threw a lot of ideas in this film for after oh, totally. writing the whole script. Absolutely, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Okay. Yeah, we we were really collaborative, and you know, the, I, it was funny because you know we got Nico Santos on board, and when I was picked, you know, originally the character I think his name was Haas, and he was kind of more of like the Stifler best friend, you know, the okay. troublemaker best friend. Yeah. And when we were talking about, it, I was like, yeah, I think we need to like, I think we need to go a different direction with him. I was like, it would be like a Nico Santos type, like that's what I said. And then when he his agent submitted it was like oh my god this is meant to be you know so uh when i was going through the cast and everything too i, I love the way you guys put this cast together uh how did you just dis- how did you pick the perfect molly what were you looking for while you were uh, getting these auditions coming in so molly's really tricky because she has to be funny but she's also she's the audience in the movie yeah. and so you need somebody that that can be really funny, but not dominate a scene because she has all these kind of colorful characters around her that yeah. do that. And so uh, the thing is, is that uh, Brit is perfect because she knows just how to like subtly, you know, drop like these great lines, but not like overtake the bigness. Because if you had a big, big main character that played everything super broad, then the whole movie feels super broad. And she she just gets in there and it's like it's almost like just deep cut scalpel sort of, uh, you know, humor and stuff like that. And and then that sort of sets the tone and lets everybody else be big and crazy around her. Mm-hmm. Uh, who is your favorite character in the movie? Uh, so that's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, I think I would always fancy myself a Molly because, you know, you want to be like the leader and the, yeah. the people that that everyone rallies around. I'm probably much more a Polly. Like, you know, I'm like the ride or die best friend, you know, loyal to the end, uh, kind of along for the ride sort of a guy, you know? Yeah. When you guys were uh, collaborating with the writers and everything, did you use any of your, like, your, like, life stuff that happened to you in college oh, or, or your friend's college if you're visiting? 100%, 100%. So a lot of stories came from, you know, from Kevin and, and, uh, and Todd. And a lot of it was like, we borrowed, like, you know, they went to Wisconsin, you know, so the, the school was the Badgers, you know, okay. uh, the colors were golden. The colors are golden purple because our other producer Warner went to LSU. And there's the story that Molly tells about like getting a second chance at a first impression uh, about like the kid that, that, that Polly got lost in the dorm and, and when he and, and couldn't find his room and shit his pants in the middle of, <laughs> middle yeah, of the thing. Yeah. That's like a true story. Not 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 the not the going to the bathroom in the pants part, but the part where I lived in this crazy dorm. I went to northern Arizona. And I lived in this crazy dorm my freshman year that had all these like weird hallways that went to nowhere. I mean, it was, I think even, Sh- even or Shandor from Ghostbusters designed this building. Wow. And freshmen would just constantly be lost, not not being able to find their room. So that, like, that was a true story. Mm-hmm. What about a favorite scene in the movie that you enjoyed uh, filming? Oh man, yeah, that's, uh, there's so many good ones in, in that that I just, you know, uh, anytime you have like the collaboration of actors, I, I really, really loved, any scenes with uh, Holland and and Brit because I just think they're so funny together. And Holland, who had done a lot of like scary movies and stuff like that, was so hysterical. And they would just riff off of each other, and it was really that. I mean, it's it, again like a super simple scene, but there's a scene in the in the courthouse where you know Holland is basically yeah. confessing all her crimes and stuff like that. <laughs> and she yeah. does that thing. She's like, "It was worth the carpal tunnel." And she does that, and I was like, "That was not <laughs> scripted. That was just totally off the cuff." And I was I was just dying behind the monitors. Yeah. Is there uh, scenes that didn't make the movie that you kind of wish we'll see yeah. it down the road or like when it comes out on Blu-ray or something? There's um you know we had Wendy Malick in the movie uh, at the beginning. She played Mrs. Zimmerman, and and we had another like a full other scene with her in the movie when Brit and you see it a little bit in the in the end credits in the in the outtakes. Yeah. Brit comes over to bring her groceries over. She thinks she's dead, uh, but she's not. And then in, in, in the original script, they have this like kind of sit down heart to heart. Uh, and, you know, Mrs. Zimmerman comments on how, you know, it feels like Molly's changed and she's like, she just kind of feels like a different person. Molly is at that crux of like, I don't want to go back to work. I know this isn't the right path for me, but you know, uh, I'm at that point. And it was a great scene. But the problem is, is we had a very similar scene with, with uh, Jamie right before it. And then we have this really great scene with Nico right after it, that Nico and, and his and his husband Zeke had written, uh, that was like just really personal to them, and 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 so when you put all three of them together, 
It was just too much. You were seeing the same scene three times. And because Wendy's character was the least influential, we had to lift it, but it broke my heart because it's a really beautifully acted scene. Mm. Would you see an, a sequel or another story with Molly Singer in the future? Sure. Do you, do you have any ideas? I, you know, I'm going to keep it close to the vest. But what I will say is that, you know, a semester abroad would be a crazy time, you know? There you go. So we have uh, September 29th, like I mentioned, uh, theater and VOD digital. Uh, any other projects you're allowed to tell us about before we end this interview that we should you look know, out for? I nothing nothing hard other than I'm I'm currently editing the new season of F Boy Island on CW, which is super fun if you're not sure if you're a big fan of the the reality dating shows but this one is like taken to a new level it's very hysterical so i work on that and then um i have a, a comedy that i wrote that my dad kind of inspired me to write a few years ago uh and it's you know it's a, it's another kind of family comedy but set in the world of bass fishing professional okay. bass fishing so it's like you know kind of a crazy backdrop but i think it'll be a really fun movie amazing andy i want to thank you for giving me today on press day and uh good luck with the film release elias thank you so much i can't wait thank to you. see your man cave i'm i'm very yeah. excited <laughs>